Between 1892 and 1954, roughly 12 million immigrants came through Ellis Island, a small patch of land located just off the tip of New York City. Today, hundreds of people still pass through each day, but they are tourists, not immigrants. David Samuelson is from Britain. Millions of people lost their lives over the years for freedom, and that lady symbolizes why we're here today. Ellis Island was the first federally controlled immigration system in America. Each day, thousands of immigrants arrived from Europe. Barry Moreno is a historian at the Ellis Island Immigration Museum. Before Ellis Island was open, there were, there were very few controls over immigration. Immigrants, in fact, at one point, you didn't need anything. Only money enough to buy a steamship ticket. But in 1921, due to the large influx of people, the government tightened controls on immigration and implemented a screening system. They were weeding out undesirable immigrants, so the inspectors were ordered to prevent the entry of anarchists, or also bol Bolsheviks. So therefore, you had to find out who is an anarchist, who is a Bolshevik or a communist. If immigrants were illiterate, in poor health, or did not have enough money, they were held in the detention center at Ellis Island until they were either admitted or deported back to their home countries. If immigrants committed a crime while in the U.S., they too were held or deported. In the 62 years of Ellis Island's operation, all but 1% of immigrants were eventually admitted. While the makeup of immigrants to America has greatly changed, 40% of all Americans have a relative they can trace to Ellis Island. That makes the Family History Center a popular spot. Roll the button over there. Here, people can look up relatives who came through the port of New York. This woman found her grandmother. You know, my grandparents were steerage passengers. They weren't first and second class. They came with 10 bucks in their pocket. And so when I'm here, I realize how difficult it was to leave everything, their, their homes, their family, and to come here. And they they made it and then they made it good for us. So isn't that cool? With about 25 million individual records on file, the Family History Center allows visitors to connect to their ancestors in a way many never have. And as the melting pot of America grows and families disperse, the historical records are increasingly valuable to those who wish to remain connected to their past. Paige Collick for VOA News, New York.